Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to talk about how to maintain secrets in Databricks development. Maintaining, maintaining secrets such as password, username, server details, these are very uh, important and sensitive in any project. Those uh, secrets should not be exposed to the development environment, otherwise it will add risk. So any solution with hard-coded uh, sensitive details will not be approved for the deployment. That is applicable for Databricks also. So in this video, I am going to talk about how to maintain those secrets. Databricks is providing few options to handle these secrets. At high level, that this concept is called secret scopes in Databricks. In this video, I am going to talk about how to integrate Azure Key Vault in order to secure those uh, secret information in Databricks development environment. First of all, let us understand what is secret. Secret uh, scope in uh, Databricks is nothing but collection of secrets which is needed for Databricks development. As I told earlier, it is preventing exposing sensitive details such as password, username to all the developers. It is avoiding hard coding any information. Coming to Databricks, it is providing two different uh, types of secret scopes. The first one is Azure Key Vault Packed Scopes, which means all the secrets will be maintained within Azure Key Vault. Azure Key Vault is nothing but one of the services provided by Azure. It is similar to Azure Databricks or Azure Data Factory because even they are different services. Similarly, Azure Key Vault is also one of the services provided by Azure. This, uh, the purpose of this Azure Key Vault is to store the secrets securely. Coming to Azure Key Vault backed scopes, which means uh, we can maintain all the secrets within Azure Key Vault and we can create a secret scopes in uh, Databricks, which means we can integrate a Databricks with Azure Key Vault with some mechanism that is called Azure Key Vault backed scopes. When we are uh, creating this uh, backed scopes, what happens is Databricks can seamlessly talk to Azure Key Vault and it can retrieve the data, uh, retrieve the keyword passwords uh, dynamically at runtime whenever needed and even that cannot be printed in Databricks environment. So it's uh, very secured. No one can misuse sensitive information. This is one method. The second type is Databricks packed scopes, which means uh, Databricks itself maintaining one encrypted database. Within the database, all secrets can be maintained. So we don't need to create any external service for this option. Within Databricks itself, the secret can be maintained. This is the second type. But in today's video, we are going to talk more about Azure Key Vault Packed Scopes. Coming to process, first we need to create one secret scope. For that, the syntax is, we have to give our Databricks workspace name and at the end, we have to add the keyword secrets slash create scope. It's very simple. Then it will open one form. Within the form, we have to fill the details such as secret name, DNS name, resource ID. This information can be taken from Azure Key Vault service. I will show those things as well. Now, let's get started with the demo. I have logged into my Databricks environment and I have my cluster is also up and running. Now, let us assume there is a requirement. We have to fetch a data from one of the Azure SQL database and process the data, then finally write the output into Azure Data Lake Storage. This is the architecture. So uh, if you don't have secret scope, you know, if you don't have any mechanism to uh, securely uh, store the secrets, then what approach we can do is, we can follow with this solution. In the first part of this uh, notebook, I have, give, I have given the solution without secret scope, which means, First, in order to connect Azure SQL database and read the data from the SQL database, we need something called JDBC connection. So that JDBC connection definition is given in the first cell. So in order to construct a JDBC connection URL, we need the information such as JDBC host name, port number, database, username, password. In this uh, step, I have hard coded everything. And you can clearly see, you know, this is hard coded in the notebook and any developer can see this sensitive information. And uh, using this JDBC connection, I am creating the data frame in the next step. Then in the next step, I have to uh, 
I have to write the data into Azure Data Lake Storage. So for that, we have to create something called Mount Point. Using Mount Point, the Databricks can integrate with Azure Data Lake Storage. I have already posted one video about how to integrate ADLS with uh, Databricks. In case you don't know what is Mount Point, how to create, you can watch that video. In this step, I am creating Mount Point. In order to create Mount Point, we have to uh, give these parameters such as source then mount point, then extra configs. In the source, we have to mention, you know, what is the, our container name? What is our Azure Data Lake Storage account? And this mount point, we can give any anything. And uh, coming to extra config, we need to mention the same um, Azure Data Lake Storage and the corresponding access key. In this step, I have card coded all these information. Again, these are quite sensitive information. It is not recommended to hard code in the, uh, in the notebook itself. But here, I have done that step. And in the next step, I am just writing the uh, table output into ADLS using this mount point. I am giving the location, mount point location and also I am creating one folder. For that folder, I am using a current timestamp also. So dynamically it will create a new folder under this, uh, uh, this mount point location and that new folder will be appended with current timestamp. Then finally it is writing the data into uh, CSV format with header and with the uh, pipe uh, separated values. This is a very simple architecture. This is very simple requirement. So once you know I have done, what happens is you know, the data will be uh, written into my uh, Azure Data Lake Storage uh, container. I have created one container demo. Within that, it will create a new folder and that folder name would be appended with current timestamp. So let me execute uh, these steps first. I'm going to execute all the steps one by one. My data frame is created. Next, I am creating the mount point. Mount point is created now. So in the next step, I am going to write the output into Azure Data Lake Storage. This is also done. Now, let me go back to my Azure Data Lake Storage and let me refresh. I can see the output. The employee output that is appended with the current timestamp. Now one folder got created, within that I can see my file. Coming to Azure uh, SQL, this is my uh, simple table. Now this is my Azure uh, SQL environment. Within that I have one table, employee. It is containing only two records, two columns, name and salary, which is having only one record. So this is very simple. You know, just for this demo, I have created a, the simple data set, only one table. So based on uh, this uh, table, Databricks will uh, uh, will come to this uh, Azure SQL environment, it will fetch the data, uh, then it will write the output into Azure Data Lake Storage. This is what we are seeing. Right. So now we have achieved the requirement. You know, as our requirement is we have to pull some data from Azure SQL and process and finally write the data into Azure Data Lake Storage. Now we have achieved the solution, but do you think this solution will be approved by any project? No. Why? Because all the secrets are exposed. So any project will not approve the solution. So what we have to do for that? We have to create some secret scope and we have to maintain all these secrets within that. We should not expose all the sensitive information such as username, password. So for that, what we can do? As I told earlier, we have to go to our workspace. In our workspace, name is till this point. Uh, our uh, workspace name starting from this one ADP, then it is giving our workspace ID, then uh, this is now dot uh, databricks.net, then finally it is giving our object equal to same workspace ID. After that, we have to give secrets create scope. This is the keyword we have to give. So I'm deleting this one, then secrets the form is opened. Now it is asking the name for the secret scope. Maybe here I can give Azure Key Vault Secret Demo. This is the name I'm going to give for this scope name. And coming to the integration with Azure Key Vault, we need to provide DNS name and resource ID. These details can be retrieved from Azure Key Vault. So I have already created Azure Key Vault uh, service with an Azure portal for this demo. Let me get into Azure Key Vault. This is my Azure Key Vault. 
environment. Uh, this environment is called Azure Key Vault iPhone Raja DE. Here I have to get uh, the Azure uh, Key Vault DNS name and resource ID. For that I have to get into properties. From the properties I can get Vault URI that is nothing but the DNS name and resource ID. We need to put these two informations. Let me uh, copy Vault URI then I am putting it into Azure Key Vault DNS name. Then I have to put resource ID. That resource ID I can get it from this uh, field. Let me copy and putting into this one. Now I can go ahead and create this um, uh, secret scope. But in order to uh, create the scope, we have to understand few things. First of all, the user should have right privilege in the Azure Active Directory. That is one thing. Apart from that, that we have we should have enabled access policy for the Databricks as well. I have already done, but how we can do that? For that, first we have to get into Azure access policies. Then we have to click on create. Then we have to tell uh, what are the permissions we want to give uh, for any external service. In this case, it is Databricks. You now Databricks can come into this Azure Key Vault and what are the operations it can perform? Uh, get, list, update, create. You know, these are the different operations you know, we can perform. And uh, for what category it can perform? Key or secret or certificate. You now if you want to select everything, simply select. Then in the next step, we have to select the user. I mean, which service? In this case, it is Azure Databricks. So we can uh, type Azure Databricks then we can select that one. But I am not going to select now because I have already done that step. So let me close this. Now I have set up my all the access and also I have retrieved the required information from property and I, I have given as input in this uh, secret scope in Databricks. Now let me create. Secret scope is created now. It is giving a clear indication. This is our secret scope name. I can note down otherwise I can retrieve uh, from a DB utility command. Let me give OK. Now we have created a, a secret scope for that particular uh, key vault which means this Databricks can talk to Azure Key Vault and it can retrieve any secret from there. And coming to secret part here I have already uh, given all the inputs of my secrets such as uh, you know what is my container name, what is my JDB database name, what is my username, password. Now I have already created all the keys that are needed for my uh, simple you know architecture in Databricks. So but how we can input uh, the secrets, I can give one simple example. For that in order to add a new secret, we have to get into generate. Then we have to give a name for that, let's say username. Then we have to give the value for that. So Raja Data Engineering. I am giving some value then that's it now we can uh, click on create then it is going to cre uh, create now username it's uh, it got created right so uh, once you know we have created you know no one can see uh, that uh, data that value actual value because it's a secret I have created just for testing let me delete that I am coming back to Databricks environment the same requirement earlier we executed the solution without a key vault. Now in this solution, I'm going to introduce a key vault. So we want to create more standard and secure solution. So first of all, I want to list down all the secrets created in this Databricks environment. For that, we can use the command dbutility.secrets.listscopes. Let me execute. Now earlier, I had only one key vault. Now we have created one more. Definitely, we should be able to see that value. Let me execute that step. This is the uh, uh, secret key we have created now. So let me copy this. Now in the next step, in order to retrieve any value, what we have to do is, you know, the simple um, uh, syntax is dbutils secrets get. This is the uh, function. Within that, we have to give the scope that we have created. And key, key means, you know, whatever the key secrets we have created in the uh, Azure Key Vault. For example, I have created something called JDBC host name in the Azure Key Vault that value I need to provide. So here go to this Azure Key Vault, our Key Vault, then fetch the uh, respective secret value for this variable JDBC hostname. That is the meaning of that. It's very simple. dbutils.secrets.get then we need to give the scope name 
and we have to give the corresponding key which value we have to retrieve i hope uh, you are clear with this now same i have to use uh, this particular key vault for my all the values i am retrieving my host name from the azure key vault similarly re retrieving database name username and password from azure key vault so in this way now if you look at the solution this is more standard and uh, the details are not hard coded anymore let me define this step now using this jdbc connection now i am reading uh, my data frame i am reading the data from azure sql which is uh, having one table employee and uh, there are two columns and one record we can see that output now next step is i have to write this data into azure data lake storage for that i have to create a mount point so mount point we have already created in the previous step so what i can do is i can i can unmount uh, the previously created mount point now i will create the mount point once again using azure key vault integration so in order to unmount the previously mounted uh, mount points we have to use the command db utility fs unmount then we have to give the mount point name this is the mount point name we have created last time right once now the previously mounted point is uh, removed now i want to mount once again but at this time i am going to use more standard way which means i am not going to hard code the container a storage account or the access key these informations i am uh, retrieving from azure key vault using dbutils secrets get then um, uh, this is my uh, uh, secret uh, scope i am retrieving into these va uh, variables and i am using these variables for my mount point um, you know how to get this access key and this uh, storage container this information i have already posted in uh, my previous video uh, where no, i was talking about uh, adls integration with databricks you can watch that video to get more information so in this step let me execute and it will create a mount point so that databricks can talk to azure data lake storage mount point is created now now in the next step i am going to write the data frame output into azure data lake storage it's the same uh, logic which i uh, explained earlier so using the mount point i am creating a new folder starting with employee output underscore then i am appending with current timestamp and once the folder is created i am writing the data frame within that so for that i am using data frame writer employee df dot write let me execute this step execution is done now i can uh, get into my uh, uh, data lake storage and i can see the output here we can see one more uh, uh, file uh, one more uh, folder got created uh, because the old one it was uh, from the previous run where we executed without azure key vault integration and uh, this time you know it has created with new timestamp and this is uh, coming from azure key vault integration uh, setup so this is uh, the entire solution how we can use azure key vault uh, to securely store the Uh, sensitive information and uh, in real time databricks uh, development it's not recommended to expose any sensitive information in the development environment that is not recommended and also that will not be approved in any standard project so this is uh, this is the way how we can uh, integrate azure key vault to achieve um, this solution like um, how to securely store the information i hope you understood and enjoyed this uh, video If you like the content of this video please like and comment in this channel also please subscribe this channel and don't forget to click on the bell button thank you